le chenal des Grands Voiliers. Pourquoi et ce chenal-là se situe là où le Second Pride navigue à l'instant, près des lignes à haute tension, côté sud de l'île. Alors là-bas, c'est par où les gros navires circulent, parce que l'eau est plus profonde là-bas. On a dragué les ponts marins, on a creusé pour dégager les ponts marins et créer une voie navigable d'une profondeur là-bas de 15 à 50 mètres en principe, c'est-à-dire 45 à 150 pieds de profondeur d'eau là-bas. C'est vraiment assez profond. Et c'est ce qui nous donne ici à Québec un port d'eau profond, et c'est ce qui nous permet d'accueillir ici régulièrement des bateaux très imposants, à très fort tonnage, comme les paquebots qui viennent ici durant la saison. Le meilleur exemple que je puisse vous donner, c'est le Queen Mary 2 de la compagnie Cunard, qui est l'un des plus gros bateaux dans le monde, qui est déjà venu ici à plusieurs reprises Pourquoi déjà. Alors, c'est assez profond ici, sans problème. Si vous voulez situer un peu mieux le chenal, vous le trouvez, vous trouvez à la surface de l'eau. Vers l'arrière droite, Québec, on voit un bateau qui est arrêté, et plus loin, une bouée verte. Et vers l'avant droite, ici, après le voilier, il y a une bouée rouge. La distance qui sépare les bouées vertes des bouées rouges, la distance ça sert à déterminer la largeur de la voie navigable. Alors, ils agissent un peu comme des lignes sur l'autoroute, où nous, on doit conduire entre les lignes, et ces bateaux doivent circuler et naviguer entre les bouées vertes. S'ils dépassent ces repères ou ces bouées, à l'extérieur de la voie navigable, il y a des plus hauts risques de flotter sur les hauts alors, ce sont des balises de navigation, des repères aussi. Now, if you look over here, folks, on the starboard side to the right, you'll see there are some red and green buoys. The green one is behind us, like at 4 o'clock to the right, and the red one's right here at 3 o'clock on the right, on the starboard side. Now, the distance that separates the green from the red buoys, or vice versa, this distance is there to determine and establish the width of the channel. That's how wide the navigable lane for the bigger ships is. So it is very crucial for those larger ships to always stay in that navigable lane, to follow the channel, because that's where the deepest water is. So the main channel over there, to the south of the island, is deeper. It was dredged, so over there you have depths of about 15 to 50 meters, which is roughly 45 to 150 feet of depth of water. So it is quite deep. And that gives us here in Quebec a deep water harbor. So this enables us to host here regularly some of the biggest ships in the world like the cruise ships that come here. One of them has been here already. You might know that ship, by the way, called the Queen Mary II from Cunard, Cunard Lines. A massive vessel, very, very impressive. So it's deep enough for that. Except the channel in front of us here to the north of the island, this part here, all the way up to that bridge, up ahead near the waterfalls, this is not as deep. Here you only have about 45 feet of water deep. Okay, so it's not that deep. So the larger ships will never come to this side, not because of the depth of the water, but rather because of that bridge up ahead. That would be way too low for many of those ships. And when this water freezes, remember earlier I told you about the icebreakers? Well, this is where we will use them most of the time, right off the tip of the island here, in the main channel over there, to break the ice. And they'll do that if necessary, wherever is necessary, all the way up to Montreal during the winter. Okay? They do not break the ice past Montreal. That's as far as they'll do it. So that means that from Montreal to the Great Lakes, or in between the Great Lakes and Montreal, that section of the river is closed. It's shut down in the winter because it freezes. And they'll reopen that navigable channel, that passage, in the spring, once the ice melts, okay? And this patch of water right here where we are, to the north of the island, between the island and the north shore to the left, this freezes completely, and every single winter it forms a natural, very thick ice bridge. And back in the old days, people would walk across or be pulled on horse-drawn sleighs to get across from one side to the other. So that was quite common, okay? Even today, you could still do that. If you needed to do it, it would still be possible at a few places because it's thick enough, it's solid enough. Of course, people don't need to do it, but if you wanted to do it, you could. Alors, là, on est rendu maintenant sur la pointe ouest de l'île d'Orléans, qu'on aperçoit juste ici à Tribord, sur la droite du bateau. Alors, présentement, ici, c'est ce qui sépare le fleuve en deux chenaux. Et euh, quand le fleuve gèle en hiver, on fait appel aux brises là dont je vous parlais tantôt. Alors, nous, on brise les glaces dans le chenal principal pour permettre aux bateaux de la marine marchande de pouvoir remonter, et ce, jusqu'à Montréal pendant l'hiver. On ne brise pas la glace, par contre, dépasser Montréal. Donc, entre Montréal et les Grands Lacs, la voie maritime ferme en hiver, pendant un court laps de temps, le temps du gel hivernal, et au printemps, on l'ouvre à nouveau cette partie-là, après le dégel printanier, pour la circulation maritime. Et euh, ici, où on est présentement, du côté nord de l'île, entre l'île d'Orléans et la rive nord à gauche, ceci va geler complètement. Et anciennement, les gens appelaient ceci un pont de glace qui se forme à tous les hivers. C'est assez épais pour soutenir le poids de traîneaux tirés par des chevaux ou des gens qui auraient besoin de traverser à pied. Alors, si c'était nécessaire, on pourrait encore traverser sur le pont de glace qui se forme ici à chaque hiver. On ne le fait plus, mais ce serait possible. 
So right about here then, folks, we have now officially reached this beautiful island to the right. If you get a chance to come out here, this, this is probably one of the nicest places you'll find during your stay in Quebec. They have some of the most charming bed and breakfast inns and some of the oldest houses and constructions in the area. Some go way back and are now considered historical monuments and they're protected by very strict laws and norms, commercial and architectural norms, to avoid any form of over-modernization of the architecture or any type of over-commercialization of the area. Okay, people here are very opposed to that. They don't want to see large shopping malls appear here. There are no shopping malls here. There are no fast food chains or restaurants, no large industries. Uh, there are no nightclubs, nothing like that. Nothing too flashy, nothing too modern. But that's the charm of the area. It's very rustic. And you have mainly farms, bed and breakfast inns. If you look at the top of the hills up here to the right, you'll see some beautiful ranches for horseback riding. You can bring your bikes out here, park your car, hop on your bike, and then go slowly here along the edge of the water and visit those little towns. It's a very nice place and it's a nice way to meet the people, by the way. Very uh, hardworking farmers. Generation after generation after generation of farmers. The very first families to land here did so as early as the 1660s, arriving here from Brittany and Normandy, France. They came here from areas like Poitou, La Loire, and Saint-Onge. They had to find a way to adapt very quickly and withstand the harshness of our winters and our four seasons, especially winter. And with the means they had, it was not, it was not you know, obvious. It was quite a challenge. But they managed, they survived, and farming helped them to do that as well and to survive through those years. Now, farming today has become their main economic engine followed by tourism. So you have some of the best farms on the island here in the region. And that is due to the microclimate that this island has always possessed. So that affects the chemistry and the uh, temperature of its soil. It makes it less